In this lecture, we introduce a systematic method for determining the voltage across a capacitor in a switched first order capacitive network that is driven by DC voltage and or current sources. Well, here's an example of a circuit that contains a single capacitor, a couple resistors, an independent voltage source, and a switch that is used to change the makeup of the circuit at some reference time that we refer to as t equals zero. Now this is an example of a switched first order capacitive network and it has the following characteristics. First, the network contains only one capacitor and no inductors. Second, the remaining elements are resistors, independent sources, and possibly dependent sources. And third, there's a switch that's used to change the makeup of the circuit at some particular time. Now although circuits like this can have many different configurations of sources and resistors, the presence of the capacitor causes the voltages and currents throughout the circuit to be solutions to first order differential equations with constant driving functions. Now because of that, the voltages and currents in the circuit will react to our opening or closing of the switch by transitioning from one value to another with a mathematical form called an exponential decay. Now when trying to determine the various voltages or currents throughout the network, it's always best to begin by determining the voltage across the capacitor. Now the voltage across the capacitor will always look something like this. That is, when the switch changes positions at time t equals zero, the voltage across the capacitor will smoothly change from one voltage to another. Now it may, as I've shown here, change from a smaller voltage to a larger voltage, but it's also possible to change from a larger voltage to a smaller voltage, and that'll just depend on the way the circuit is set up and what dependent, independent voltage and current sources are in the circuit. But for either situation, if the switch has been opened or closed for a very long time before t equals zero, then the voltage of the capacitor will stabilize at some value that we call Vc0 minus just before the switch is changed. So this is the value of the voltage across the capacitor just before the switch is changed. Now because the voltage across the capacitor is the integral of the current through the capacitor, the voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously. This means that its value will be exactly the same immediately after the switch is moved as it was immediately before the switch is moved. And to determine the value of the capacitor voltage at this time that the switch is changed then, we need to analyze the circuit when the switch is in its original position and note that the capacitor will behave like an open circuit because all of the voltage and current sources are constant values and not changing in time. So the voltage that we see just after we've changed the switch we'll call VC0+. plus. Now this notation we're using is important. We're calling the voltage just before time equals zero VC0 minus. We're calling the voltage just after t equals zero, vc zero plus, and because this is the voltage across the capacitor, it can't change instantaneously. So those two values are the same. Now other voltages or currents in the circuit might change instantaneously, so vc zero minus could be different. Excuse me, the voltage or current elsewhere in the circuit just before we change the switch could be different than the value after. And we'll show this through a few examples later on. Now once the switch has been moved to its new position, the voltage across the capacitor will eventually reach a new value. And we refer to this value as VC infinity because that's the value that the capacitor voltage will take if we wait long enough, that is we let time move out toward infinity. Now to determine this value, we need to analyze the circuit when the switch is in its new position long after t equals zero. And again note that the capacitor will behave like an open circuit because all of the voltage and current sources are constant values not changing in time. Finally, to determine how quickly the capacitor voltage will transition from one value to another, 
we need to determine something called the time constant for the circuit. The time constant that I've called tau here determines how long it takes for the voltage to move about 63% of the way to its final destination. Now for a first order capacitive circuit, the time constant is determined by first evaluating the network's equivalent resistance as seen through the capacitor's terminals and then multiplying this equivalent resistance by the capacitor's capacitance. So in this case we write tau as the equivalent resistance for the rest of the circuit as seen by the capacitor times the value of the capacitance. Now finally the mathematical equation that determines the voltage across the capacitor looks like this. So we need to know the final voltage that will appear across the capacitor. If we wait long enough, let time move out toward infinity. We need to know this voltage across the capacitor right at the time that we change, so we switch the circuit. And we need to know the time constant. And when we do, we'll know that the voltage will have a nice mathematical expression for the voltage. Now, all voltages and currents in the circuit have this mathematical form. So all we really need to do for any other voltage and current then is determine the voltage at t equal infinity, the voltage or current right at, after we've switched the circuit, and the time constant for the circuit. Well, let's illustrate this procedure for a first order capacitive circuit. Well, let's take a look at this circuit. We've got a capacitor whose capacitance is 4 farads. Got a resistor of 3 ohms here, 2 ohms here, and a 4 volt source and a switch that at time t equals 0 will close. So let's make a couple notes about this circuit first. First I'll note that the capacitance, so ultimately when I need to get the RC time constant, the capacitance that we'll use is 4 farads. Alright, now the next thing I want to do is take a look at this circuit before the switch is closed. So at time less than 0, and actually we'll be looking at time t equals 0 minus, just before the circuit is closed the switch is closed. Now when the switch is open, no current will flow through this voltage source and through this 2 ohm resistor. So this part of the circuit will not affect the response on this side at all because it's an open circuit. And then because we'll be in a DC operating situation, this capacitor will function as an open circuit. So let me illustrate both of those. So we'll take the circuit on the left off and we'll open up the capacitor and then we can look to see what the voltage across that capacitor would be just before we close that switch. So in this case VC 0 minus. So just before the switch is closed well, there's no sources whatsoever, so this is just the voltage across a 3 ohm resistor that has no current flowing through it, so that's going to be 0 volts. Now, when we close the switch, we will now include the 4 volt source and the 2 ohm resistor. So let's take a look at what the circuit looks like just after we close the switch. Now just after we close the switch, the switch will now be closed and we will have a voltage across this capacitor because remember the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. So the value for VC0 plus, well that'll be exactly the same as the capacitance voltage just before we turn the switch. And that was 0 volts, so just after the switch is closed, we'll still have 0 volts. So now, let's see what happens as time goes toward infinity. Now as time goes toward infinity, the capacitor will behave like an open circuit. So if we open that up, we can determine what the value of the voltage across the capacitor would be as t approaches infinity. Now in that case, VC infinity 
Well, this voltage is also the voltage across this 3 ohm resistor, and we can use voltage division since we have 4 volts across the series combination of these two resistors. The voltage across the 3 ohm resistor would be the total voltage, 4, times the ratio of 3 to the sum of the two, which is 5. So that'll be 12 fifths volts. So now the final thing that we need to determine is the equivalent resistance. So what we're going to do is look back from the terminals of the capacitor into the circuit and determine the equivalent resistance. And recall that to determine re equivalent resistance, we turn off all the sources. So in this case, if we make the voltage source 0 volts, that'll be a short. So the equivalent resistance that the capacitor is seeing is going to be 3 ohms in parallel with 2. So we write that as 3 in parallel with 2, and that's 3 times 2, which is 6, divided by 3 plus 2, which is 5. So that's 6 fifths ohms. So now we can determine the time constant for the circuit, and that would be the equivalent resistance times the capacitance. Equivalent resistance is 6 fifths. The capacitance is 4 farads. So that's going to be 24 divided by 5. And the units here are ohms times farads, which are seconds. So now we know the time constant, we know the final value for the voltage, and the initial value for the voltage across the capacitor. So we're in a situation where we can write an expression for the voltage across the capacitor for all time after the switch has been closed. So VCT, that's going to be the voltage across that capacitor at infinity plus the voltage across the capacitor just after the switch has been closed minus the voltage across the capacitor at infinity and then e to the negative t over tau. So let's see what that works out to be. VC infinity is 12 fifths. Then VC zero plus is zero minus 12 fifths, so we'll have a negative 12 fifths. And then E to the negative T divided by 24 fifths, so we might write that as 5 over 24 times T. And that would be for all times after that switch has been closed at t equal 0. Now if we wanted to draw a plot of this voltage, it's a function of time, this would be V C T. Well, it would have a value, it would start at 0, and then we'd see it exponentially grow to its ultimate value of 12 fifths. And we'd know that we'd get to about 63% when tau is equal to 24 fifths, close to 5 seconds there. All right, well, there's an example with a relatively simple circuit. And what we'll do in subsequent lectures is look at a little more complicated circuits that involve one capacitor
and voltage current sources and resistors.